Kaiser and Candace Patterson are designing and screen printing their way to Charleston with their unique art. I talk one-on-one -on -one with the two artists for this edition of Quentin's Close-Ups. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel and like Quentin's Close-Ups on Facebook. Candace Patterson and Will Kaiser, welcome to Quentin's Close-Ups. Hey, Thank Quentin. you. How's it going? Hey, Quentin. <laughs> it's going great here in the Low Country. I know that you all are artists with the Dos Bandidos art brand that we all love and know here in the Low Country. And from my understanding, it was born out of an epic trip across Mexico. And <laughs> since that time, you all have been designing and screen printing, training your way across the Low Country since 2010. Let me yeah. ask you what's new, what's now with your brand? Awesome. Why don't you take this one? Um, we've been doing a couple different series this year. Uh, our first focus has been on uh, places in Charleston that make it special. And those are going around like our favorite restaurants, our second homes. So we're going around and we're slowly like sneaking pictures of like th scenes of people in their natural habitat and the restaurants and bars in Charleston. And then we're going back and making art based on some of the images we're capturing and trying to just like capture like what makes it special to live here and what we love to do yeah. and see. And a little bit of a quick process is we take photos so that we can draw from photos. So we don't, um, the, the way a screen print or the way we do screen prints is we draw a pen and ink and then um, scan it into the computer and then use Illustrator to build out the colors. So it's both a, a digital and kind of analog feel. Uh, but one of the reasons we started this series is because we are reopening a cafe. We've been working on it for two years, actually. It's called City Lights East Side, and it's going to be, it used to be City Lights Coffee for 15 years on Market Street. And now we're going um, into the East Side and we're expanding into a cafe. So we've been building it out with the Santis crew, the guy who's, who, the people who own Santis. Yep. And so it just kind of inspired us to be like, wait, you know, what makes this city worth living in? It's the people and the places. And as a, as a disclaimer, of course, everyone who's familiar with Quentin Washington and Quentin's close ups know that the East Side's home to me, was home to me for at least 30 years before we moved earlier this year. I do know that. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me ask you this. Why the East Side? Why now for this coffee shop? So our 15 year lease was up. And after going through a pandemic, the previous landlord wanted to double our rent. So we just couldn't afford that. So we actually closed down and we didn't know what we were going to do. And then um, the so Doug and Santi, who owned the restaurant Santi's, has had this building and they've been wanting to do something with it for a while. It's been, um, it was a corner store from 1889 to 1999, and then it's been closed up. And so they came to us and they said, Hey, what do you think? And so Greg, myself, my business partner, myself, and the Santis guys embarked on this journey two years ago to rehab this building and turn it back into a commercial space. So it kind of came to us and we love Charleston. We've lived downtown for, I mean, I've, I've been here 15 years. He's been here 20 and um, saving this building was just really a passion project and we couldn't have done it alone. And the, the Santis guys couldn't have done it alone. So it's kind of a collaboration. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Who do you want to collaborate with when it comes to art here in the low country to capture the essence of the city? Ooh, that's, that's a, a great good, question. Yeah. Uh, we're very supportive of all the artists that uh, we meet and come in contact with. Like, definitely have I'm definitely a fan of several people in town, and we like collect art. In fact, if you ever see our wall, it's full of art, and that's something we want to do with the cafe. Is also is have a rotating art space, uh, and that was the whole point. It's our first ability to show together was at City Lights Coffee Shop, mm -hmm. and it had a rotating art, and so we want to offer that same opportunity to other people. Coming up is you don't need to be in a gallery to be able to show your art. You need somewhere that is going to be seen by a lot of people and is accessible. So that's what we're trying to do with the cafe. So really, we want to collaborate with everyone. So we want to offer this wall to local artists who don't have a gallery space. And we want to be very intentional and have openings. And it will be up for a month. And what we found was that having an intentional space in the public actually more eyes got to see it. People from all over the world, people from all over 
you know, uh, South Carolina, people from Charleston came through and it was really valuable and wonderful. So really we, um, we're open. So once we get this shop open at some point in January, we want people to come to us. We want to show work from the community, from the neighborhood, from Charleston. So yeah. Hopefully everyone we can slowly collaborate with. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I know that's going to happen. And so when it comes to art, what is that intentional space here in the low country that's really missing? Um, I don't know. Maybe more murals. Like we've tried to do is we've tried to do some kind of street shows. Like a few years ago, we took over line and meeting street uh, where that new big complex is being built right now. They gave us permission to like, put our art up all over these old, lost, abandoned single houses that were being neglected. And uh, that got us a lot of attention. And then earlier this spring, um, we did a show in the changing neighborhoods of the east side, north central, and west side, and how they were changing tr uh, dramatically over the last 10 years. And we made these outside wood pieces that showed the change and captured census facts of the 10 years. And we put those at the park on Line Street across from Sicey Coffee Shop. The so, Elliott Borough yeah, Park. Right. I think more murals. So we actually have... Um, more public art. More, more public art, art and more murals. Yeah. Mm. Okay. What is the state of public art, as you know, from an artist standpoint? Yeah. I think um, outside art. So I, there's public art that can be inside, yeah. but I think outside art is easily... It's just so accessible to everyone. And you don't have to go in a space. So for me, it could be sculpture. It could be mural. It could be um, an outside art installation. Like uh, you, you're hanging your paintings outside for, you know, a finite period of time. So people can come and walk up and see. And, and there's just something that is really wonderful about viewing visual art in the expansiveness of outside. And I think stuff like head highs, oh, yes. art shows that they done, we Gap Gallery, it. yeah, that was all exciting. Like, because it was that. like pop up community shows, and everybody comes for one night and gets to see it and gets to collaborate and talk and communicate. And that's where like ideas are generated and yeah. like enthusiasm is built from events like that. Pop up art shows are yeah. really wonderful in that way. Yeah. Love them. And what are those other trends that you all are trying to get a hold of right now? Trends, um, I think incorporating 3D spaces, like we're two dimensional artists. So we've been trying to screen print on like wood and make it three dimensional. Uh, that's something we're capturing. Um, also just like learning from like going to like the, the Beeple openings. If you haven't gone to the Beeple openings, those are wild. Like, so you know, cool. And he, you know, it transforms the space. Your whole space is changed around you when there's moving in this digital. So that's really fascinating. Wow. This is a simplistic question for you, Will and Candace, but how do you all actually view art today? Okay, so um, I view a lot of art online. I view it at pop-up shows. I view it at cafes. Um, and really, because we travel pretty often, we just got back from uh, Cartagena, Colombia. And I would say... We look for art spaces. We look for art spaces. We yeah. look for murals. And, and they're actually on the streets every day it was so inspiring artists got to set up and just line the streets with their art so you could just see it mm -hmm. outside in this beautiful environment so yeah we we look for it we look for pop-ups uh, murals and art spaces we also do go to galleries we look you know because we we want to see it all <laughs> it, but yeah day-to-day -day, it's probably instagram and the, the internet day -to -day, yeah, yeah. Wow. It's definitely Instagram and the internet, just so we can learn uh, and collab, learn and gather more information from other artists. See what people are doing, because yeah. you know it's a way that you can see daily different updates. Updates. How modern has your art become? Oh, I don't know. Like, I think we're still like very grounded in the the 1950s screen printing because it's <laughs> right. very it's, we mix ink by hand we're printing yes. it by hand uh, and the whole point of doing that was like it's still intentional it's still tangible and there's margins of error because we're doing everything by hand so we like wanted to, we also and the reason why we did screen printing is we wanted to make art accessible and, and affordable our, and affordable in our 20s we both were fascinated with art but we couldn't afford to like for spend four thousand dollars in a painting but you could buy a shepherd fairy print for 25 dollars mm. 
And so that was exciting. And so I started collecting art via that direction. Maybe we're not that modern. I don't know. I mean, we, we are modern in the sense that I feel like the color palette style is of our time just because we're influenced by our time. But we also have a step in the past with the way that we create. What artists locally, regionally, or globally actually influence you today? Yeah. Uh, so locally, we really love Taylor Faulkner. Yes. She is she's also, awesome. Uh, she's awesome. She's also a screen print artist. She's, she's, she does lots of different mediums. Um, I'm so, a big fan of Revo, the muralist oh, yes. and painter in town. Yep. I love his stuff. Yep. Um, and so regionally, Jeff Kopish, he used to be part of Charleston. Uh, he just moved back to Greenville, but he did, uh, he does, really fantastic folk art but he also if you've been to folly beach he did the big octopus oh, in the taco, yes. boy, yes. in the taco yeah. boy out yeah. of uh recycled uh plastic bags huh. and then globally banksy yeah banksy's probably the big one i mean yeah. probably yeah and and shepherd fairy Shepard and fairy, yeah. um miss me and yeah there's so i don't know there's a ton we have a list of a thousand people that look and follow up that, constantly. But, but that's a little snapshot yeah. of local, regional, yeah. global. So what is your snapshot of the arts community today? I think it's continuously growing. Um, and it's recovering from the pandemic because I kind of pushed everything down. But I think it's growing and you find it in markets, like the pop-up markets, like directors and directors or... Uh, any other pop-up markets like Holy City Vince Christmas mm -hmm. Holiday Market, you'll just find a lot of artists there and, and people are having to be resourceful and getting their art out there in different mediums instead of just like a traditional gallery. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think it's continuously growing and there's always new people coming in constantly in Charleston. Which is exciting. So we're seeing a lot of different art and we're seeing makers being included as artists, which I think is important because, you know, creating makes the world a better place and it's really nice to be with makers artists all together at these so we do a lot of uh, pop-up markets that's another yeah. i'm glad that you brought that up because that's a huge way that we see art and we see what other people are doing is when we're either attending or working a market wow so let me ask you this which current painting is actually your portal what current painting? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. I want to think like they're a big influential one right now. That's what's the what current painting? Yeah. So, um, gosh, that's a really that's a hard question. Let me think about it. So, painting I, is not necessary. We're so influenced by screen printing yes. and um, <laughs> and spray paint and murals. So, this is a really good question for us because painting is also stunning and beautiful. Yes. Um. Yeah, I don't know. That's a tough question. Yeah. Let Let me think about it. Let <laughs> yeah, me we'll back to <laughs> painting because I could tell you for other yeah. parts yeah. of art. <laughs> And, and, and listen, I know that everything that, that you all create is actually done with intention, both hand-drawn original designs and screen painting, as you mentioned, by hand. So what hand-drawn original designs truly describes your brand? I would say there's a lot of architecture. Oh, yes. Um, and there is a lot. So we, we really use a lot of different techniques. So there's the pen and ink, which is hand-drawn, but then... We might make clouds out of spray paint. Oh. We might make, we might use cotton balls to yeah, create sure. texture. So we bring in a lot of different things to the prints that are hand drawing, but then uh, different techniques to create other parts that, which, so I guess I said we built out all the other colors in Illustrator. Really, a lot of times we'll use spray paint, cotton balls, other things to like that we scan into the computer that we create different texture, stars, clouds, um, backgrounds. And, and every piece is a story about what we experience and what we love. And so they're, they're just snapshots of a personal day or a personal, like, something we walk by every day and look at. Like, it's these we're just are stories that we're trying to tell in our art. And so hopefully it can capture and like the Charleston that we love and that we want to share with everybody. Like, and, and even beyond Charleston, the world. So we, 
our newest piece, which will probably not, it might be out before the end of the year, maybe not, but we were in Cartagena's and it was their Independence Day and we were part of some of the most stunning parades. I mean, they were incredible. So we were very inspired by the dancing, the music and the costumes of Cartagena. So really, I would say our art is a love story to um, places and people. Yeah. Right? The, like, create, the creativity of life. Is the creativity of life. That's mm -hmm. that's a good one. I like that. <laughs> I, I like that too. <laughs> mm -hmm. What's What love story do you want to tell about Charleston next to the world? Mm. That Charleston is more than, you know, we've, we've gotten to be such a tourist destination. And while the beauty of Charleston is what continues to attract me, the people and the places are what make every city, but especially Charleston, beautiful. And so we're trying to zoom in from the macro to the micro to show people kind of a glimpse of what real like what it's like to live in charleston to be a person that lives in the city every day and okay. not not just you know walking down south abroad which is beautiful <laughs> i mean we love doing i imagine too. there's gonna be a whole future series based upon conversations from the bar at the cafe yes day, like it's true we uh one of our reasons why we love having the cafe is we think community is the most important thing. So having a gathering space for people is a passion of yeah. both of ours. To collaborate, to communicate, and maybe to break down some stereotypes and biases that we come into sometimes. Yeah. And it's kind of, we found with the last cafe that people came together. And when you get to know each other, prejudices fall off, right? It's like a, I just, I love it. So it's like all people from all over the world and all over town can come together and find this space and really start getting to know each other and love each other. Yes, absolutely. And that's really important to me because this world is, I think it has more love than it does hate, but sometimes the hate is very loud. And so we want to be loud with love, <laughs> which is cheesy, but you know, like whether we're showing a place that we love, a person that we love, a you know, a community. Absolutely. And, and, and what current stereotypes and biases and trolls that you want to break down with your art? Yeah, I don't know. It's like it's changing quickly and constantly. And I think we're trying to show that it's not just high rises and cranes going on. It's homes and people walking on the street and talking to each other as neighbors. Um, yes, things change rapidly. There are new people here constantly. There are tourists walking around on Upper King Street. But then you get off those streets and all of a sudden it's neighborhoods. And it's you talking across the street to your neighbor and learning about the history of that. Like we found out our neighbor, she used to grocery shop in the place where we're storing right now back in the 1950s. That was her grocery. Yeah, Miss Sarah. She's almost 89 years old and she's one of our she's a, one of our best friends and um really just and i and i want i don't want to lose the history of charleston as well i want to like you know with the african american museum opening up i think that's a huge step forward i want to move into the future we have to but also remember the past and um and for us, so we're getting a lot of stories from our neighbor, Sarah, right now that we are documenting just so we, you know, won't lose it because she, unfortunately she's not going to be around forever, uh, but yes. her stories can. And we're also trying to inject a lot of our personal family into the cafe. Like she's got all these Barbie dolls that her mom had as a kid and then she had. And so we went and put them all together in shadow boxes with the dresses that her grandmother made. My grandmother and my great grandmother made yeah, these so you, dresses. Like in a, so one bathroom's gonna be full of Barbies from the sixties, seventies, eighties that they all played with. And then I got stuff that had been passed down to me from my grandparents and stuff that I want to put in there. And they even found some bottles while we're doing construction in the walls. And we're gonna put those bottles in there because those bottles belong to somebody in that building before us. And like so, yeah, and, and I guess like with our art, 
yes, we are screen printers, but we also, we built all the furniture in the cafe. Mm -hmm. We just finished the sign. So I think that as artists, we've really like, we kind of. We like building, making, preserving. And capturing Mm -hmm. moments. So that's. Mm -hmm. What neighborhood do you want to capture the moment in next? It's got to be the east side because, so we live in North Central. Oh, yes. Have, um, yeah, so we have for for 20 years. So yeah. we, we've been, so we've seen North Central really, you know, it's it's so different than it used to be. But um, we are coming into the east side and we want to be intentional about being inclusive of everybody. And we want to, the east side's changing. It is. It's changing a lot right now, but there's also a lot that is still the same. And I want to document the East Side because, well, we're, it's about to be my second home. You know, I mean, I'm going to be there seven days a week (laughs) in the cafe. If you want to pop by, it'll be like me or him probably for the clothes for a long time. And so it's going to be, you know, it's only half a mile away from North Central. Uh, so we walk there every day. We have for years and years and years. Uh, but I think the East Side, I mean, it, it's where we're building a yeah. business and we're really excited. Yeah, that's amazing. I was just over there yesterday. So it's, 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 see, it's interesting to see what's changing and, and what's going to happen next over there. But what is that neighborhood in Charleston that you want to, you know, capture next with your screen prints? Oh, okay. Well, you know what? Um, is interesting there i am pretty fascinated with the neck oh, of yes. charleston yeah so um and why am i blanking on the neighborhood rosemount you got rosemont so rosemont union heights and- so union heights yes union oh, yes. heights is probably the next neighborhood that we are fascinated to go catch rosemont as well yes but union heights i um we are at the station and park circle so we drive through those neighborhoods. Through those neighborhoods to get uh, three days a week to go restock. And I've just been seeing the change and, and just what's going on and just like people living and, you know, we love Bertha's. And <laughs> <laughs> so Union Heights, I think that's our next neighborhood yeah. we want to capture. My and- dad used to work at the Navy Yard. So he would tell us all the stories yes. of what it was like working in the Navy Yard. And yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And we love going to Munkle to drink right. beer and <laughs> heading up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just interviewed no. the owner of Munkle a couple of months ago for Quentin Spill something. He's a really great guy, Palmer. Yes. <laughs> yes, indeed. Cool. So, yeah, Union Heights. We'll yes. be walking around there. and Yeah, that's going to be amazing. That's a great neighborhood. That used to be my running route, incidentally. So, yeah. Really? Nice. That's yeah. cool. Yes, indeed. Awesome. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, let me ask you, where do you see arts in Charleston in the next five to 10 years? I think it's going to continue growing and thriving thanks to places like Redux and uh, the, like the White Gallery on Mount Pleasant. I think there's creating more and more spaces, and I think we'll see more and more of these like ahead high shows. And hopefully, it's going to be we'll start incorporating more digital stuff along with the analog and you start seeing some of maybe like what people's doing with a painting next to it, like starting bringing those two worlds together and seeing. I mean, I think they are going to come together yeah. for sure. So what else, and, you, yeah, what else do you want to bring together with your art? What else, like what else do we want to bring together with our art? Yes. Ma'am. We want to just keep, uh, we started experimenting this summer. We it's, took a speaker behind one and yeah. I did my favorite baseball player, Ronald Acuna Jr. And like I had his, you press the speaker and it's got his walk up songs. And so I think I want to incorporate more of that, like street sounds and people talking. That was actually stories. inspired by people. Uh, it was not inspired coming from the people. So it was like starting. Not, not, yeah, but incorporating different more, sounds and, and, you know, making it more of a full 3D experience instead of. Just a just just a visual experience, yeah. Start tapping in more of those senses. Yeah. Wow, that, so that's maybe we'll, yeah. Maybe we'll start pushing more into that now this year once we're done working on the cafe. cafe. And, <laughs> yeah, it's, we're, it's I got been, four full time jobs right now. It feels like same. It's been uh, it, happily we're very lucky. Yes, mm. yes, yes, yes. <laughs> 
Well, this was fun. I mean, Will Kaiser and Candace Patterson, thank you so much for your time again. Thank Welcome you so to much. Close -ups. Yeah. Thank you for your time, Quinn. This is You're fun. You're awesome. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. I hope you have the best day. Likewise.